So 1.2 algebraic expressions, mathematic, uh, mathematical models, and real numbers. So start out with a couple definitions. A variable is a symbol. Usually we're going to use X, Y, or Z. We can use other letters too. We'll see that from time to time, but those are the most popular ones we'll use for an unknown value or number. An algebraic expression is a collection of numbers and variables separated by operations. Evaluate each algebraic expression for the given values or values of the variable. So on this first expression, we have 7 plus 5x, which represents 5 times x. And so they give us the value for x is 10, and so we want to go ahead and simplify that expression. So what we'll have here is we have our 7 plus 5 times 10. And then from here, we just do our order of operations. So we have to take care of the multiplication first. So 5 times 10 is 50. 7 plus 50 is 57. On our next example, our expression is 6x minus y. This time we have two variables. We have x and y. So for x, we're going to substitute 3, and for y, we'll go ahead and substitute 8. So 6 times 3 minus 8. Once again, we'll do the multiplication first. 6 times 3 is 18. Take away 8 would leave us with 10. And there we go. All right, moving on to our next examples. So here we have x squared plus 3 times x. Here's our x value. It's going to be 8. So let's see. We'll have 8 to the power of 2 plus 3 times 8. So order of operations, we'll square first. So 8 squared is 8 times 8, which is 64. And then the next step is going to be to multiply the 3 and the 8. So we might as well go ahead and do that now. So that will give us a 24, and then we'll go ahead and add that together, and we'll be done with that one. So let's see, 88. There we go. On number 7, let's see, we have x to the power of 2 minus 6 times x plus 3. And our x value in this case will be a 7. So 7 to the power of 2 minus 6 times 7, and then a plus 3. So let's see, 7 to the power of 2 is 49. And like I said, the next step would be to multiply. So we'll go ahead and do that now. So 6 times 7, let's see, what is that? 42, and then we have a plus 3. Now it's very important that we go from left to right with our addition and subtraction. I have to do this part first. If I did the addition first, that would be incorrect. So let's see, 49, take away 42, that will leave us with 7. 7 plus 3 is 10. All right. Here we go. Uh, for this next one, let's see. We've got 4 plus 5 times x minus 7, all raised to the third power right there inside the parentheses. And so our x value is going to be 9 in this case. All right, so let's see, 4 plus 5 times 9 minus 7 to the power of 3. So order of operations, you want to do the parentheses first, if there's anything you can simplify, which we can. 9 take away 7 is going to be 2, so we'll go ahead and simplify that. Next, we want to do any exponents. So we have our exponent right here. 2 to the power of 3, so 2 times 2 times 2. So let's see, that would give us a 4 times 2, that will give us 8. So we're going to have 4 plus 5, and then 2 to the third power is 8. Then next we have to do our multiplication. So we're going to get 4 plus, what is that, 40? 4 plus 40 is 44. Okay, our next example, let's see, we've got x squared minus 3 times x minus y in parentheses there. And so let's see, our x is 8 and our y will be 2 in this case. 
So let's see, 8 to the power of 2 minus 3 times, let's see, 8 minus 2. Okay, so once again, order of operations, I would do the parentheses first. And so let's see, 8 take away 2 would be 6. Okay, then next would be our exponent. 8 to the power of 2 is 64. And then the next thing you would do is the multiplication. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Just give us 18. So now we have 64. Uh, take away 18, which I believe is 46. All right. Let's see what we got on our next page here. Okay, more of the same. We just have a fraction this time. So if you remember from the previous section, what we'll want to do is separate the numerator and denominator separately and then do any quotient that, um, that is left behind. So let's see, we're going to go ahead and let x equal 10. So let's see, we're going to have 5 times 10 plus 2 all over 2 times 10 minus 14. So I'm just going to focus on the top for a second. So let's see, 10 plus 2, that'll be 12. So 5 times 12. And then 5 times 12 is 60. Okay. On bottom, 2 times 10 is 20. 20 take away 14 would be 6. Okay. And then 6 goes into 60 10 times. So my answer is 10. All right, let's look at our next one. Okay, so this time I have an X and a Y. So X is going to be negative 2. Y will be 4. So let's see. We're going to have 2 times negative 2 plus 3 times 4 all over negative 2 plus 1. Okay. So looking at the top, I've got some multiplication going on in two spots. So I'll go ahead and take care of that. So let's see, that'll give us a negative 4 plus 12. Okay. And then negative 4 plus 12. We got a little tug of war going on here. So take the difference. Keep the sign of the larger number. So this should be a positive 8. Okay, so all I did was... Since they're different, uh, they have different signs. One's negative, one's positive. I take the difference. I subtract four from twelve. The larger number was positive, so my answer is positive. Okay. Same thing down here. I have a little tug of war going on. Negative two plus one. So different signs. So go ahead and take the difference, which is one, but the larger number is negative. So this is going to be a negative one on bottom. So we end up with eight divided by negative one. And so that will turn into just a negative 8 right here. Okay, so whenever your denominator is 1 or negative 1, you can go ahead and simplify it without having a fraction there. And so a positive divided by a negative is negative. All right, the last thing we're going to look at is some just some of our symbols we use in math. We'll use a lot of these throughout the semester. This is kind of more of an introduction right here. We're all familiar with the equal sign. So here are some examples like 0.5 is the same thing as 1 over 2. Those are the same thing. Not equal to 3 is not equal to 7, right? That's pretty obvious, right? Okay. Our, these are the ones that a lot of times students will kind of mix up is our less than and greater than. And so just need practice and you'll be fine. So 6 is less than 10, yeah? Uh, 15 is greater than 14. Okay, yeah. 4 is less than or equal to. It's not equal to, but the, the, that gives a little caveat to where it could be. So if I wanted to write 4 is less than or equal to 4, that would be a true statement. Now, if I wrote 4 is less than 4, that would be, that would be false, right? So that's kind of the difference is the equal to two part allows what you're looking at to possibly be equal to it, not just less than it, okay? Uh, then we have a greater than or equal to, very similar to the previous one, except it's flip-flopped. 
one is greater than or equal to zero, and that's true. Now, the thing about this, though, is as we move forward with our inequalities in other sections, you do want to be familiar with reading them both directions. And what I mean by that is if you look right here, 6 is less than 10. Yeah, 6 is less than 10. But that's the same thing as saying 10 is greater than 6. So you want to be able to read it from left to right, but also from right to left. Okay, so this would be 14 is less than 15. 8 is greater than or equal to 4. 0 is less than or equal to 1. So just just kind of word of caution, it, it is helpful to be able to read it both from left to right and from right to left. Okay, let's look at these. Right here, we're just asked to determine whether it is true or false. Determine whether each statement is true or false. Okay, so negative 6 is greater than 2. That throws students off sometimes. That's going to be false, okay? And so a lot of times we're like, well, no, 6 is bigger than 2. Well, yes but we're looking at negative six. So here's zero, here's negative six, here's two. So the larger numbers will always be um, towards the right end and our smaller numbers are towards the left end, right? Okay, so looking at 45, let's see, four is greater than or equal to negative seven. That one's gonna be true. Once again, if you look on a number line, four is over here on the right negative seven is over here on the left so yeah four is larger than or equal to negative seven okay on um, 46 negative 13 is less than negative five that one would be true also so once again if you look on a number line here's where negative five is here's where negative 13 is so negative 13 is less than negative five so over here Okay, and then our last one, zero is greater than or equal to negative six. And so that one will be true again. So if you look on number line, zero is right here, negative six is over here. So yes, zero is the larger, it's larger than negative six. Larger numbers are to the right, smaller numbers are to the left. Okay, so that's just kind of a, a brief introduction to working with variables and we we went over our some of the symbols we like to use so a lot of this will be used moving forward